every story is entitled to an ending. This one will come to a close at this cemetery in Seattle. But first, let's go back to where it begins. Chisholm, Minnesota, boyhood home of John Ponikbar, Chisholm High School graduate, enthusiastic outdoorsman, World War II airman. This is Sony, and that's me. As John's little sister, oh, yeah. Mitzi Meadows was proud uh. of her brother's military service and happy for the love that blossomed with Shirley from just up the road in Buell. John and Shirley were married two years, a military family moving from base to base when Janie was born. We moved from Montgomery, Alabama to Anchorage, Alaska. That was the last move we made. The air base to which Captain John Ponikbar Jr. was flying home. It's still hard. When the plane carrying Mitzi's brother and 51 other servicemen flew off course into the side of Alaska's Mount Gannett. We were coming home from church, and we heard it on the radio. A blizzard raged, hampering the work of searchers. They would find just a section of the tail, the rest of the plane lost in an avalanche, all aboard entombed in packed snow as the search was ended. I can just remember sitting in the car and my mom crying. Janie was seven years old in this photo with her mother, leaving the airbase in Alaska to move in with her grandparents in Seattle. Life was changing a lot then. <laughs> yeah, it was. Right here. While back in Minnesota, John's family had a stone placed in the Chisholm Cemetery as a place to honor their missing airmen. I don't think you'll ever get over it. Nor do you expect the phone call that came six decades later. It was like blindsiding me with a two by four. The crew of a National Guard helicopter spotted airplane parts emerging from a glacier 12 miles from the crash site. John's family yeah. had given up all hope of finding him. And now military mountaineers were being dispatched. During the few weeks each summer the weather allows, they've searched searched for five years. I'm sure there's been some remote recoveries done elsewhere, but to the level of this one, I'm not aware of it. Alan Cronin, an Air Force funeral director. Yes, sir. Heads up the operation that's recovered so far. Remains of 37 of the 52 men lost on the mountain. I think we have made a promise to wives, children, husbands that if they were to die while in the service, wherever they're at, we're going to bring them home. Which is why John Ponikbar's Minnesota kin have joined his Seattle family to welcome back John on his 95th birthday. Today, after nearly 65 years, we gather this morning to honor the life, the service, right up. the sacrifice of Captain John Ponikvar. John will be laid to rest with his wife, Shirley, who died too soon to experience this. This day, which words can barely describe. I almost can't. It was wonderful. Every story is entitled to an ending. We brought everything to a close. And now, a son of Minnesota has his. A new beginning, too. Boyd Hooper, Carol Evan News, Chisholm, Minnesota.